And welcome to this week's Mailbox. And this week it's mostly going over questions and comments relating to leveling in WoW, uh, looting again, the global cooldowns, a couple of other things as well. Hi, right, so first of all, I just want to look at this. This is my comment, actually. So I did a bit of a speculation video on Monday, last Monday. And I thought it'd be quite nice to do something similar. It doesn't have to be a speculation, but a speculation stroke discussion video on a Monday stroke Tuesday, just ahead of the Azeroth review, where, of course, we get to talk about all sorts of things. And so I asked for comments for people that, you know, what do you want me to talk about? And quite a lot of people uh, put a comment in there. So I've already done one of them, and that came out on Friday. And I've got another one lined up, which will hopefully be out tomorrow, or it might be later on tomorrow. And maybe I'll be able to sneak another one in for Tuesday as well. But any that I don't get to do separate videos for, I will also uh, discuss during the Azeroth review. Uh, so I'll, I'll bring those up there as well. And then I think what I'll do, I'll do this each week. So I'll put another statement on there. So if you want to find where these is, basically on my YouTube channel, if you go to the community tab, uh, I'll put another one, another little call to arms uh, there as well to uh, to put your ideas for things you want me to sort of discuss or speculate on for the following week. So the first actual statement. So there's a few about levelling. So I did a video on rewards for levelling in World of Warcraft. Uh, someone's saying there's too many levels in the game, especially from a new player's perspective. I mean, I've said this uh, many times, you know, 120, uh, just as a number, it's just vast. Um, and most of the levels are boring and not exciting. Um I would love it if they made it uh, to where you got at least one ability every two or three levels. I mean, for me, what I was trying to explain, for me personally, as like a seasoned role-playing game, uh, I, um, you know, every level I think you should get something. Not just, a, not just something passive that you could easily miss. Um, you know, the idea of levels just being milestones on the way to an actual destination. I just don't think is very good. But having an ability every two or three levels, I suppose, will improve things. The downside is, of course, what you really want to come up with is a system, of, a future-proof system. Because a lot of the ideas you can have for you know, spacing abilities out will work fine. But then you constantly have to rejig them every expansion. Because every expansion that comes along and you don't get any more new abilities, of course, because, you know, Blizzard think we're sort of saturated on that. Um... You know, you have to completely rejig it again. But even for me, two or three levels, like two or three levels early on, when you're getting levels every few minutes, okay, fine. Uh, but when it's taking you a whole session, you know, a couple of hours or something to get a level, at that point, every two or three is still potentially several days, depending on how long you play the game, of course. It might be one day for some people, um, before you get another ability. No. It says, maybe bring back trainers so you actually get some context to how you even learn the ability. I'm not sure I agree with that. I think, I think train, the idea of trainers is, is fairly old-fashioned. Uh, there are some aspects of the game that are just sort of more, a bit more modern. I did have other ideas, though, but I'll come on to that with another comment, uh, which I was discussing in a stream yesterday. And it says, they could just decrease the maximum level to, like, 50. So every two or three levels, you either get a new ability uh, and... Upgrade to an ability you already know or get to choose a talent something. I mean if they did something like that Of course, they'd be able to give you something every level But again the reducing it. I mean get we could have a level squish. I mean, I'd certainly support that But again, it's not a very future-proof system because and it's also something that clearly Blizzard have no issue with I mean, I was amazed when we got to like level 100. I thought well, surely they're gonna squish it I and mean, they didn't and now we're going to 120 you could the looks like there was a time when Blizzard were concerned by it because in Cataclysm you went up five levels, in Mop you went up another five levels, but then they went back to ten levels. Um, I don't actually remember what they said about it if, if they said anything at all, but uh, I mean, so they're clearly not worried in the slightest about the, the just the sheer number of levels we're getting, otherwise, they'd have kept it at five levels per expansion, uh, which of course they haven't done, so you know. I really don't think Blizzard see an issue. They've never said that they see an issue. Um, so this one, actually, just to take it out on a slightly different subject, is about the global cooldowns thing again. Um, so one of the issues with putting, globe, uh, putting offensive abilities or throughput abilities on a global cooldown is it affects quite badly a couple of types. Uh, one is those who have 
short duration throughput cooldowns on a shortish cooldown. So the person saying here is that short duration cooldowns could easily prolong, be prolonged by two seconds and solve the wasted activation time. And, and that is something that you know Blizzard may want to look at actually because where you create, I mean, I still maintain that what they've done is, is take a sledgehammer to crack a nut and they've identified a problem and then have applied this solution, which may well solve the problem in their eyes, but at the same time, it creates other problems. And what they will then do is their usual thing whenever they do something like this, which is then to apply solutions to the new problems arising. Instead of just in the first place applying a solution to the specific problem, you know, rather than you know, doing something that brings up a whole load of new problems. And one of the ways they may put out some of these fires may indeed be to extend the duration of some of these. They may consider, well, it's an unintended effect that you're going to have much less use out of this DPS cooldown. So we'll bung it up by not necessarily two seconds, but say one second uh, to compensate for the lost activation time in an area where there was no big deal about it. You know, Frost decays, for example, with Pillar of Frost was no big deal. Uh, with that, I suppose, Bestial Wrath, same thing for Hunters. Um, so maybe extending it by a second would be a way to deal with that. I would be amazed if Blizzard didn't do something to alter the way uh, those classes are you know, behave with their cooldowns to take account of this. But at the same time, I haven't really seen anything yet. And to the next one. So back to, sort of back to leveling. It says, for all the problems with the vanilla talent system, I think it could come back if we filled out the entire thing once we hit cap. A lot of the problems were ones of false choice, but as Artifact Weapons Circa Emerald Nightmare showed, you can still have interesting decisions if eventually we'll all be the same. And, and this is interesting because this is something I was talking about yesterday as well. The idea of not changing the talent system. I want to be clear on that. We'd still have the talents as they are now, where you've got each row, you've got three abilities, and you just choose. What I'd be talking about is something that looks very much like the old talent system, but it'd be like abilities or skills. You could call it something else, attribute, skills, something like that. And it would look very similar to the old one. And the idea would be that it's not a case of choosing like it used to be, as it was for talents. You would actually fill it all up by the time you got to level cap. And the, but the idea is you could take different paths. So uh, instead of getting your abilities when you ding, I mean, you could go back to the previous comment about the trainer, wouldn't need the trainer, but you wouldn't automatically get levels, sorry, abilities anyway. When it's time to get a new ability, you don't get an ability. You get to choose one on this row. So you, the, to begin with, the first time you get one of these, you choose an ability. Maybe it's a choice from three. Which one do you want? And maybe your choice is... One of them will be a defensive ability. One might be an AOE ability. One might be, you know, something else, something more usual. Because, for example, some classes get AOE abilities fairly early on, and some get them quite late on. Same with certain defensives. Um, maybe give some more choice. Uh, because who cares while leveling anyway? It's not being overpowered while leveling. And when you've got to your level cap, you've got them all anyway. So you choose an ability, but then the next few levels, you get points to, again, add to your tree. But it doesn't give you access to new abilities. It sort of increases the power of the ones you've sort of chosen. Um, or maybe, you know, let's say you get your first talent point at, say, level 10, as you used to, or skill point, we'll call it, skill point. And, you know, you've got a choice between a defensive and AoE ability and a single target ability, just for the sake of argument. So level 10, you decide to go, well, I'm, I'm going to go for my AoE ability. Okay, I'm going to click that. Then next level, level 11, you get another skill point. Now you can choose in that case either to make that ability a bit more powerful. So increase the damage it does by, you know, whatever, 5%, something like that. Or you could actually go, but actually, no, it's okay. I'll keep it as it is and I'll get the defensive ability because there's been a couple of mobs that have given me a bit of trouble. Uh, so you get your choice. Do you want to spend that skill point on starting another ability or do you want to extend it down? And when you've finished buffing that ability, again, you get to choose one of the other ones or maybe you that opens up another row of, of, of abilities you can choose and you click on that one and, and so on. So the idea is that each level you either get a new ability or you get to improve an ability you've already got and it's all designed that by level cap you've got what we basically would have anyway. Uh, but it just means that every level you get something to do that customizes your character. Now, I'd almost be fully behind that idea. 
The only downside, again, is the future proofing because it would all work fine for the expansion in which it's introduced, but the problem will be for the next expansion. What do you do for your skill points for the following? Because again, we can't have a new set of abilities. But as I said, we can't keep giving new abilities even every expansion. And you can't just tear the whole thing down and restart it, but this time aiming to finish by the next level cap. So it, it would need work an idea like that. It would need work. But that sort of thing is, is something I would be in favour of. But as I say, it wouldn't be talents. We'd still have the separate talent thing. It would be really your skills, your abilities, your way of getting your abilities and, and buffing them over time. Uh, but anyway, that's something I would be in favour of. I think that would make it a lot more interesting with, with getting levels. Because it's so dispiriting when you get a level now. It's like, you know, on, on the alpha yesterday I dinged 114. It's like, okay... It's just another one. I didn't get anything. I'm 114. I'm now six levels away from level cap instead of like, you know, seven. And to the next one. So, you know, the idea I was coming up with uh, in terms of getting an item, a reward item, is what I was actually talking about in the video. I wasn't talking about abilities. Um, so, I don't think gear would be that rewarding for leveling. I think we should get something like the exotic bags, uh, where you can have a chance to get a pet or a mouse. So that's the, that's one of the ideas I was talking about. I actually said in the video that was my least preferred idea. But in actual fact, the consensus was very much for this sort of thing. And, you know, and what I said was, you know, like a satchel like we get now, so you can get some consumables in it. Um, and uh, maybe a chance at a pet or a mouse, something like that as well. Uh, which maybe you get, maybe you don't. Now, that I think would really be interesting. As I say, it's my least preferred option, but actually judging by the comments, uh, a lot of people seem to prefer that. I did actually have another question. Someone asking, oh, if you put this on a forum, you think you get a lot of positive feedback. I haven't, but I will sort of say this, a little bit of an appeal, I suppose, in many ways. Um, what you notice about the really big YouTubers is... Their stuff is regularly, I won't say frequently, but I'll say regularly discussed on forums and things like that. But it's almost never the author that actually discusses them. I have a bit of a hit and miss approach. Every now and then I do actually put something on the forums. And I don't just post a link to my video unless it's Reddit where you can't do anything else. Um, you know, I will generally put a transcript. Sometimes it's literally the actual transcript of, of the thing I was talking about because sometimes I script it, sometimes I don't, just do it like this, make it up. And, um, and you know, sometimes I'll put it on a forum or Reddit or something like that and sometimes, you know, it, it looks like it's been appreciated and sometimes it just falls dead. So although I, you know, spend some time each day reading through forums and, and stuff like that, I never really get a good handle on what is likely to do well and what isn't. So in actual fact, what I would suggest is uh, if you ever think that, oh, this would actually be quite a good thing to discuss on X forum or wherever, feel free to do that. Uh, feel free to post that idea uh, because, um, because that would be much better. It would help me out. It would take me less time as well. And as I say, I, I have a very, very poor... Um, you know, oh God, I can't think of words now. It's too hot. The thunderstorm I was promised didn't come. Um, but yeah, I, I, I am not good at discerning what is going to get a good discussion going on a forum and what isn't, uh, has to be said. And so the next one, come here. Um, so this was to do with the global cool down thing. So someone said, I think it's a marketing thing. They're trying to reduce the gap between good players and bad players. Now, I don't agree, but you've sort of come up with the reason yourself here. It says, problem is the GCD changes will increase that gap. The people who came up with it don't seem to play the game. Well, that's not true. The people who came up with it, absolutely. Let's first of all get that out of the way. Developers do play the game. Some of them play it at a reasonably high level. You know, Ian Hazacostas is known for still playing uh, at the mythic raiding level. All right, he's hardly top 100. Uh, in his guild, uh, doesn't mean to say he wouldn't be capable of it, but nonetheless, he still raids. He still does mythic raiding with a group of players. Because it's not players from that work at Blizzard either. You know, from a group of players who are just players. So yeah, and they, but all of them will play some portion of the game at whatever level. So they all play the game. So let's let's forget about that one. In terms of reducing 
uh, the gap between good and play bad players, but it actually increases it. I agree, and that's the reason why I don't think that's what it's for. What it's, it's, you know, I think sometimes it's easy to try, and I know I'm accused of this myself, over overthinking a thing. I do. I overanalyze things sometimes. But that's just my nature. Sometimes it's quite simple. The explanation is quite simple. I think this is just a classic case. You get this every expansion. Some influential or senior developer has decided on something. They've come up with a philosophy. And that philosophy then has to be carried out. When it's an overarching philosophy that's going to, in this case, affect all classes, then all the individual class designers have to follow suit. And it's not the only one um, that's coming with with Battle for Azeroth. In fact, maybe I should do a top five of all the five biggest changes coming. Because there's quite a number, and not all of them are all that obvious. But, yeah, then, then it affects everyone else. But it could all be the brainchild, or the brain farts, depending on which way you look at it, of one developer who was just either very senior or very influential. Um, good at persuading the senior ones who get to say, this is what we're doing. And I think that's all it is. I think it's just one person who managed to either you know bore everyone to tears until they agreed or just persuade people that this was a good thing identifying a problem that's super niche if it even happens at all and they've again applied this sledgehammer to a situation um and i think that's all there's to it i don't think there's any grand plan i don't think you know there's any subtlety to this idea i think that's all it is uh, as simple as that it's just someone who's done this thing and it now impacts on the work of all the other developers uh, next one. So, I think this is a response to a response. But anyway, the, the gist of this is, why should guilds that raid heroic or even normal be forced to use personal loot, though? The only sound reason I've heard thus far is the abuse of split raiding, which is abuse by the top end of the mythic raid community. Now, that's not actually true. It used to be true, and then it wasn't an issue. Um, it is actually something. When you say abuse, I suppose technically it is. Uh, it's a strong word, though. Um, device, we'll say, or I'll say anyway. It's not the top end of the Mythic Raid community. It's all the way through the Mythic Raid community. That's not to say all Mythic Raid guilds do it. But, you know, just as there are some top 100 guilds that don't split raid, equally, there are some that are only just inside the top 1,000 that do, or even outside the top 1,000 that do. It goes all the way down. Because in actual fact, to split raid, all you actually need to be able to do is to have not even everyone in your raid group, but a decent number in your raid group to be able to have out with which in a split group you could kill at least one boss um, uh, on normal or heroic and for it to give you more loot than you could do with one group. Now, you know, so bear in mind... Um, that can apply to almost anyone. It can even apply to heroic guilds. If the first few bosses are fairly straightforward, you could even, although I've not heard of it, but then, you know, like I've said before, I, I don't exactly have my finger on the pulse of heroic guilds. I rely on some of you guys to bring me up to speed with what goes on in that community. But there's nothing to stop heroic raiders doing that. If they've got enough people without. Just kill the first few bosses and then combine and do the rest of the bosses as a group once you've hit a wall uh, and you get more loot that way as well. So it's the fact that it's, it's a very straightforward thing to do. It doesn't require a lot of extra time. You only need to have a character that's got reasonable gear. Um, and with the catch-up gear we have in the game these days, it's not that hard to do. It's really not that hard. And, and you've got yourself a split raid group. But anyway, on to the main point. It says, which is absurd because it basically means those players are getting punished for the actions of other people who don't even focus on that content. Um, I think the, the argument here is that heroic, ones who are going to progress through heroic and then not go on to mythic, or even just take some significant amount of time to get to the mythic stage, say a couple of months, something like that. Do they really need master loot? And I know some have said that it's used as a reward system for rewarding raiders uh, and if a guild really thinks that that works then okay fair enough i'd be doubtful because i'd be considering myself to myself i already think it's a struggle for heroic raiding guilds because 
you know, if you're a decent player, but you're very, very casual, but you're a decent player and you've got access especially to a desirable class or spec, I would have thought you'd find it relatively straightforward to get yourself into a pug of mostly mythic raiding outs who need, say, a Resto Shaman or a Warlock or something like that, uh, and basically get boosted through the whole lot. Um, you know, rather than, than being a guild group, because if you're going to use Master Loot not as a mythic raid guild would or should, which is to make your raid group as strong as possible for the next progress boss. If you're going to use it as a reward system, then that means there's going to be winners and losers in that system. If it's seen as a reward as well, winners and losers. And the losers are just going to look at it and think, you know, there's going to be a calculation in their head. Where am I most likely to get loot? Is it here, where I have to stick to a load of rules? Or is it in a pug, where I'll just take my chances on personal loot? Um, but that is the argument there. Whether it's a true argument, I can't say. Because, like I said, I don't have intimate knowledge of the heroic raiding community. Uh, other than what people tell me. But that's my view on that particular one anyway. But as I say, as to the first point, it's not the top end mythic raid community. It's all it's all the way through. It's just not everyone. It's not. <laughs> don't say I'm saying every mythic raiding guild is it. Of course not. Um, it's probably not even half. But nonetheless, it goes all the way from top down to the bottom. And there are some very high up that don't do it as well. Uh, next one. <laughs> so small typo at 120 in the video. You typed Tonk, but I think you meant Tonka. And I actually meant, it. well, and I did mean Tonk, actually. What it should have been is Tank. So, <laughs> but, um, oh dear. I still, the thing is, right, this is basically an in-joke from a guild I was in like 10 years ago. And and I have always, ever since then, I don't say tank, I say tonk. Well, sometimes I'll say tank, but when I'm typing it in, like uh, when I used to do credits and stuff like that at the end of videos, it'd be tonks and stuff like that. Um, it's just how it always is. I, I appreciate that it's confusing, and I appreciate also that it would just be easier for me to put tank, because I know every time I type it, which is not that often, to be fair, because I don't really do a lot of stuff on tanks, um, but when I do, I know full well it would be just a lot easier to put tank in properly and stop being such an idiot about it. But I've never been one to do things the easy way. Uh, so there, there we go. There's that one. Uh, it's completely meaningless. But I will continue to do it, and I'll just have to take these comments on the chin. Uh, next one. Oh, so again, this was to do with armor. We were discussing in the Azeroth review, and it's a fruitful area potentially for a follow-up video about armor types particularly in light of the video i did on how personal loot could affect people of different armor types and and wouldn't it be easy if there were just three armor types in the game because male armor users are more and more marginalized and someone said there or you know i mean it could work the other way you're right you either sort of spread the male users out into other armor groups or do you try and take some of the leather users into male to balance that out as well because you know male very very small representation leather very high representation and someone sort of said here i always thought druids should have male iron bark armor ah of course then the question becomes for a druid would their bark armor be worse than their ferocious bite Uh, next one. So, <laughs> this is a good one. This is, I've got to work for my likes. I remember the time, actually, when I read this comment out. You can read it yourself if you're not just listening to me while you're doing world quests. Um, I remember in the early days of me doing YouTube stuff, you know, when I wouldn't get very many views. Uh, when I was actually trying to do YouTube stuff, I don't mean when I was just using it as a repository for my videos. And, you know, you get a few likes. You're very eager for your likes. And um, and I didn't get very many dislikes. In fact, almost none. And people used to say, oh, you know, you only get likes, you never get dislikes. It's not a good thing, actually. Dis I'm not saying dislike my videos. But the fact that you get... I always think you don't... You're not actually made it at all at any level on YouTube unless you get dislikes. Because if you only ever get likes, that basically means your videos are only ever being distributed to people who like your content, by definition. Um so you need it to have wider range. 
And you just accept the fact that if you're going to get it distributed to people who wouldn't necessarily ordinarily come across your content, that obviously some of them are not going to like it. Uh, so actually, I'm, I'm not at all put off by dislikes. Uh, but yeah, you, the, the work you've got to do for likes now. It says, this was again on my speculation video. So I'm not going to do any spoilers here, but I was saying what I think the real story about Frozeroth is, including basically what I think the last sort of boss is going to be or what the last event is going to be. And this person said is, would have liked if you got in on some speculation on possible enemies to come as well. My, so no, it's not good enough that I've come up, potentially, I might be wrong, uh, with the actual story of Battle for Azeroth that's hitherto been unannounced. No, no, I've got to come up with specific enemies that haven't been announced and have never been in the game before as well. <laughs> oh, dear. Dearie me. Uh, and just to finish off uh, my Idiot's Corner for this week, I had a good one, this one. So again, it all relates to that bloody gnome video that I did for April 1st. Bloody thing, keeps going and going. It's the video that won't die. I know I can kill it, but you know, obviously that's silly. So it says, if this is an April Fool's joke, why am I seeing this on April 18? To which my, I haven't responded, but my own response to that could be, well, if I was born in 1976, how come I can still see my birth certificate? It's like, what do you even say to a question like that? Oh, my God. I wish people would remove their jokes after the first. Sure. Okay, while I'm at it, I'll go through my whole collection as well. And whenever there's a video that I've produced during, say, a beta or a PTR cycle where Blizzard have changed something, Maybe I should delete those as well. Maybe I should go through and delete all my videos that are older than two weeks because then they might not be relevant anymore. Yeah, that's what I should do. Gordon Bennett. Anyway, <laughs> that's, uh, that's the mailbox for this week. Thanks for watching if you made it this far. As I say, I am going to be putting up tomorrow or Tuesday, maybe Tuesday, on the actual day of the Azeroth Review, another little thing in the community tab there, just inviting people to come up with ideas for anything that hadn't been discussed up to this point. Those who have suggested things from last week, thank you very much. As I say, one idea already used. I am intending to do at least one other one as well, uh, potentially two if I can, if I've got time. Uh, and then the rest of them I will also make sure are discussed in the Azeroth Review too so they won't go to waste don't worry about that uh thanks for watching if you've enjoyed it don't forget to like comment subscribe if you haven't subscribed already share with other people who might also be interested and until next time i'll see you later